Stand with me again, Psalm 109, verse 105. Seems almost impossible to believe this over already, doesn't it? I, I start getting ready for next year tomorrow. <laughs> and, and it seems so far away. And, and then you get here, and it's over. And it uh, just seems impossible, but it has been a blessing. And uh, I have enjoyed it. Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. I have sworn and I will perform it. I'll keep thy righteous judgments. I'm afflicted much, very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes, even unto the end. Amen. Amen. You go ahead and be seated. That's a... Instead of our songs for hymns, we're going to have Brother Hughes sing another solo. Please, Brother Hughes, come right over. Thank you. Well, Brother Hughes is coming. I'd like to recommend to you a songbook that he's put together with all the songs that he's written. It's like 90 pages, uh, about 90 pages. Uh, and he's put it together, and there'll be songs that he's that he's written, and I think it'll be a, very, a blessing to you. He has some... Some of the songs are on CDs uh, out there in the lobby on the table, uh, on his table, and some of the others that just have, well, this is the sheet music that's in this book that he's put together. So there'll be some songs that you could use in, uh, in your solos and churches and places you go, and I know you'll enjoy them because we've enjoyed Dr. Hughes. As he said. It'll be a blessing to you. God bless you. It's been a joy to uh, be able to be around uh, Bible Baptist from Brother Cooper and and added on top of that to uh, get to sit in on the Dean Bergen Society. And uh, uh, I appreciate everyone's kindness. This song's entitled My Soul. <laughs> Oh, 
meeting I said scholars lie I haven't changed my opinion uh, but uh, I think that our critics are out there because we've had some fun this week we've laughed we've cried we've enjoyed ourselves and they're thinking this isn't a very scholarly meeting you're supposed to sit up there and read all these fancy things and be foolish but remember this, scholarship is not inventing big words to make simple things difficult. It is making difficult things simple. You and I work hard to defend the King James Bible, the Texas Receptus, the Masoretic Text. You don't usually have to defend a lion. If you'll open the cage, it'll defend itself. When we go home from this place, it is important for us to preach the word, not about the word. Preach the word. It'll defend itself. Now, we need to be ready to give an answer, and I, I, that's what this is about. To preach the word. Dr. Wait, before I introduce you formally, I need to ask you what I've heard Dr. Bennett ask you so many times. You've been studying the Bible for many years in English, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic. In all those years, have you ever found any place where our Bible is inaccurate, mistranslated, or untrustworthy? Um, I'm not. All right, then I guess we can ask you to speak. I guess you <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce to you our president, our leader, our friend, a man who has faithfully fearlessly preach the Word of God Amen. for many years. Dr. D.A. Lee. Thank you very much. I've been around the proper way here. We're over here. All right. Did you all get one of these? Uh, anybody need, a, need one? Raise your hand if you didn't get one of these. Anybody? All right, brethren, thank you. Pass those out in good shape. Uh, we're going to be talking about Gnosticism, this last message, and uh, get that book on the book table if you can. It's a revision of what uh, the lady has written many years ago, Janet Mosier, The Doctrinal Foundation of the New Bible Versions. That's what Gnosticism is. It tells you some of the theology of it, some of the beliefs of it. But uh, notice uh, all Gnostic quotations, all Gnostic quotations are can you read that all right? Or should we dance? Should we shut off those lights? Maybe it'd be a little bit easier. All, all quotations are here from the Gnosticism, the Doctrinal Foundation, the New Bible versions. The pages of the book are where the information is found. 212 pages, as we have it there, it's on the book table. But this is a very vital book. Uh, she came to our home one time, Mrs. Mosier, and uh, she talked with us. And later on, she finished this little work, and uh, so I thought it was excellent. And uh, she said, now, uh, don't tell it to anybody. She doesn't want to sell it. I said, Mrs. Rozier, I'm not going to sell it. If people want it, whatever the cost is, we'll take care of it. She's with the Lord now. Uh, she didn't want to make any profit on it. But I never found anything as important, more important to this subject than this particular book. So uh, we have it. According to the Gnostics, the place and headquarters of the true church, the Gnostic church, and God's temple as Alexandria, Egypt. That's where the Gnostics lived and breathed. They still have Gnosticism all over the world today, but the headquarters was, probably still is, Alexandria, Egypt. It's Egyptian. 
But notice also Alexandria, Egypt was the headquarters of the Gnostic uh, doctrines and heresies, but also the Vatican and Sinai Greek manuscripts were from Alexandria. That's where the Vatican and Sinai manuscripts originated. Now, Dean Burgon said it's, it's in all possibilities. In Alexandria, Egypt, like every other place in the whole then known world, they received the traditional text, the same text that underlies the King James Bible. But the Gnostics, when they found that they did not agree with their theology and their doctrines, altered that text. They changed it a little bit here, a little bit there, just a little bit, little tiny things. In fact, 8,000 differences, Dr. Jack Mormon has found, in the text that they have in the Greek and our text that we have. Of the 8,000, some of them you wouldn't even know the difference in English or translation, but 356 of them are doctrinal passages. But the Gnostics changed and altered certain things. And most modern Bibles in all languages of the world, whether it's Hebrew or whether it's, whether it's the Hebrew New Testament, whether it's the, uh, whether it's, uh, whatever, Spanish or Italian or whatever the language might be, their languages are based upon these manuscripts. They're filled with Gnostic heresies. Filled with Gnostic heresies. There's abbreviation for the versions, if we know many of them. KJV is the King James Bible. and uh, All the verses are quoted from the King James. ASV is American Standard. Uh, Pastor Dan spoke on that the other night. Uh, Revision Revised, RSV. New American Standard Version. NIV, the English Standard Version. Also, our other brother spoke on that one as well. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, De Vitro. So these are the abbreviations. Now the propagators of Gnostic doctrine are five that are listed in the book, and I think that these are the main five, the historical five. Clement of Alexandria, the teacher there at the Alexandrian school. Origen, he was a disciple of Clement, a teacher there also at the Alexandrian school. Hort, his Greek New Testament, 1881, revised English version, was a disciple of Gnosticism. And he used the Gnostic doctrines, the Gnostic texts, the Vatican and Sinai texts. Same with Westcott. An apostate, these were apostate Church of England men. And Dean Bergen was a conservative, Bible-believing Church of England man. Completely contrary. He wrote three articles in a, in a version, in a periodical, the time when the Westcott and Hort text came out, and answered that text. He answered the text uh, with the, the, what it was wrong about it, the philosophy behind it. He answered the text as far as the English Revised Version of 1881 was no good, and defended the King James Bible. That's all in the revision revised that Dr. Bennett mentioned this evening. And then Philip Schaff, he was the leader in the American Standard Version in this country, 1901, as Pastor Dan mentioned. So these are some of the leaders of the Gnosticism brought over into modern day. Now, notice also the Greek manuscripts. Uh, Gnostic theology is the basis for critical Greek texts and heresies. Here's some of the abbreviations that we'll use. Uh, BYZ is Byzantine, that is the Antiochian Texas Receptus, traditional or received text. That's what that stands for. Uh, S is Sinaiticus, the Alexandrian Gnostic text. Uh, B is the Vatican text, an Alexandrian Gnostic text. A, Alexandrinus, an Alexandrian Gnostic text. C is Ephraim, Alexandria text also. Uh, Greek editions on page 22 are mentioned. WH is West Cotton Hort, 1881, English Revised Version. NU, Nestle United, and Allen uh, text, and United Bible Society text, 26 and 27, 28 editions. So NU, and Nestle, and United Bible Society text. So these are some of the abbreviations. Now, what will be shown in these slides? The modern Bible versions have not changed many of their words by accident. A lot of people think, well, just because Vatican and Sinai manuscripts teach this, therefore use it. It's not accidental. Those changes are not accidental. Those changes are Gnostic changes. And every fundamentalist, like at Bob Jones University or are these other fundamentalist schools that are perpetuating this text, they're perpetuating Gnostic heretical doctrines. 356 of them are brought over by this thing. And these people say, oh, there's no doctrinal differences. They're lying. Either they're lying or they're ignorant of the facts. Now, a teacher of theology, if he's in the Westcott and Hort text or our kind of text, ought to be knowing the truth. Yes. And if he doesn't know the facts, 
that doctrinal differences are there. Uh, he should know, or he shouldn't be teaching. Uh, whether it's a Bob Jones graduate or some other critical text man, whether it's Dan Wallace has been quoted here, whatever. And if he doesn't know it, he shouldn't be teaching. But if he does know it and says there's nothing doctrinally involved, he's a liar. And the devil is the charge of all the lies, as it says in John 8, 44. You're your father the devil. He's a liar and the father of it. Uh, these texts are not by accident, the changes. The Gnostic manuscripts, B in Sinai, Aleph, have changed many of the traditional received Greek words in order to conform them to Gnostic doctrines of Alexandria, Egypt. Now, since the modern versions translate from the Gnostic manuscripts, Vatican B and Sinai Aleph, they also contain many of these Gnostic doctrines, which we will see and which we will find. I have outlined 15 Gnostic doctrines found in these new versions. Now, these are basic doctrines. These are not little tiny, insignificant things. Some are more important than others, granted, but these are major doctrinal heresies. First is the Gnostics believe that God is the universal father of all mankind. That's what they teach in modernist churches, universal fatherhood of God. That's Gnostic doctrine. Uh, the second one, Gnostics teach Jesus was not God incarnate. It's not just the Muslims, not just the sober witnesses, but not just the Jews. A lot of these, not God incarnate. Very important. The Gnostics, the third thing, they deny the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. God was manifest in the flesh. He was not incarnate of the Lord Jesus. Number four, they deny some of the attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ. His omnipotence, his all-powerfulness, omnipresence, all-knowing. These are some of the things that they deny. Number five out of 15, uh, Jesus was the son of Joseph, not the son of God. Very important. These Gnostic doctrines seep into their texts. Every one of them we'll see. Number six, the Gnostics, the Lord Jesus Christ is not Lord. Take away the Lordship of Christ. He's not Lord. Number seven out of 15, Gnostics said Jesus had a sin nature, was not perfect. Just a man. In fact, he had to be saved. He was lost. Some of the teachings very clearly. Uh, number eight. Gnostics say the resurrection of Christ was spiritual, figurative, not bodily. Number, number nine. Gnostics say the second coming of Christ is not literal. Second coming, not literal. Not really coming back. Number ten out of fifteen. Uh, they teach that man is bisexual. So Sodom is all right. He's a man and a woman. He's both. Who cares if a sodomite's all right? President Sodomite, President Obama, as many have documented very clearly, he, no wonder he says sodomites can marry, lesbians can marry, uh, man and man, woman and woman, for the, but he was, he's a Gnostic in his theology and practice, not only in Illinois, as he was a senator, and other times frequenting the homosexual bars and places of that kind, a strange thing. And number 11, Gnostics teach that marriage and sexual propagation is evil. Marriage is evil, sexual propagation is evil. Number 12 out of 15, uh, Lucifer is the Savior. Not only is he the Savior, but he's, he's uh, the only one that can save. He's Lucifer, the old devil himself. Number 13 out of 15, Gnostics favor idolatry, fornication, adultery, and homosexuality. They favor all these things which the Bible calls sin. Right. Definite sin. Number 14 out of 15. Gnostics teach that redemption includes the whole world. Universal salvation. In fact, they teach even the devil is saved. Yeah. Everyone in this world is saved, including the devil and all of his angels. Yeah. 15 out of 15. Gnostics teach that heaven is not a literal place, just figurative. Let's see some evidence for some of these things. Number one, Gnostics teach that God is the universal father of all mankind. That's page 52. Now notice these different references. In Matthew 24, 36, the Byzantine text receptus in the King James Bible teaches my father. The Lord Jesus was the son of God and God the son. Perfect God, a perfect man. My father. Not so with the Gnostics. They don't believe he's the one that's the father of the Lord Jesus. He, they change it to simply the father. 
The Father of all of us, the universal fatherhood of God is taught by changing my to the. See, these are simple things, aren't they? So, oh, look at that little tiny thing. Oh, it doesn't make any, any difference. It does make a difference. They do it with purpose. They do it with malice. They do it with apostasy. They do it with satanic doctrines. Same with John 6, 65. The Lord Jesus says, my Father. Not with the Gnostic texts and, and Western Latin Horde, Southern, uh, the New, New uh, Nestle United Bible Science, New American Standard, NIV, English Standard, just the Father. Gnostic perversion. He's the Father of everybody. That's why these services in, uh, on the TV sometimes with, with uh, funeral services, whether they're Roman Catholics, whether they're apostate, apostate everybody's saved, everybody's got the Father. Oh, the Father, he's not the universal Father. Uh, Notice also, let's see, how do we get back there? Let me go this way. Okay. Notice in John 8, 25, 28. Again, my father, all these other references and translate to the father, just the father, the father, the father of everybody, in other words. John 8, 38. They changed my father to simply the father again. Uh, and then John 14, 28, 16, 10, 20, 17, all these verses changed my father speaking of the Lord Jesus to his Father, to the Father, everybody's Father. Now, if you can think that this is accidental, and you think that the Vatican manuscript, the Sinai manuscript, just happened to change it a little bit here and there, every one of these places, if you think it's accidental, I believe you're dead wrong. These are not accidental doctrines. This is a Gnostic doctrine, hatched and carried out and full-blown growth in Alexandria, Egypt, where the traditional text was founded, and when the Gnostics, as Dean Burgon says, when they found that their doctrines could not be supported by the traditional text, they changed the text. This is their change. First thing, Gnostics teach the universal fatherhood of God. Here again, Matthew 24, 36, my father changed the father. All these things... Are, how can I find so many of these things? If it's not there, it's there. It's over and over again. John 6, 65, my father to thee, father. Again, John 8, 28, my father changed to thee, father. John 8, 38, my father changed to thee, father. John, I guess we've seen that already. How do we get this backwards? Like that? All right. Uh, did, we get, did we come with this one yet? <laughs> you got that one too? I don't, all right, let me go to the second one. That's to teach that uh, Jesus was not God incarnate. They deny the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Two and three are quite similar. First Timothy 3.16. We've used this many times. And uh, it's clear from our King James Bible and the text of Receptus, great is the mystery of God in us. God was manifest in the flesh. Of course, the Gnostics did not believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was God. He wasn't manifest in the flesh. There was no incarnation. And so all these documents, the manuscripts and the new versions, change simply he. They don't put Theos, which is God, they put Hos, which is who, or Ha, which is which. And it doesn't even make sense in, in grammatical English or, or Greek English, Greek grammar. Uh, great is the mystery of God is who, you know, great is the mystery of God is, is God. It has to be a subject. It's not he who. It's impossible. But this is the doctrine of the Gnostics. They deny the incarnation of Jesus Christ in 1 John 4, 3. Uh, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. It's that spirit of Antichrist. They say, they stop with Jesus. Everyone that doesn't confess Jesus is not of God. Uh, but that's all they say. Well, the Jews confess Jesus and the Muslims and Jehovah's Witness, they confess there's a Jesus. The Christian science say there's a Jesus. But they don't believe Jesus Christ, the deity combined, the perfect deity of Jesus and Christ together, is come in the flesh. That's the incarnation. Not of God, that's the spirit of Antichrist. And uh, in these documents here, and the Westcott and Hort documents, the New American Standard Version and others, omit Christ has come in the flesh, just take it away because they deny the incarnation. The fourth out of the 15, they deny some of the attributes of Christ. In John 8, 59, they deny his omnipotence, his all-powerfulness. They don't believe he was powerful. He was just a man. He was a sinner. They teach Jesus was a sinner. Joseph was his father. He needed to be saved. He didn't die for sinners on the cross. Nothing true about their theology and their Christology 
And so he had no omnipotence. So when you come to John 8, 59, uh, the Jews were gathered around to stone him to death. Stone him to death. And it says in our King James Bible, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Uh, the other versions completely eliminate this. They just simply say things before it, things after it. But they, if how could someone who's simply a human man go through the midst of a crowd of Pharisees that are ready to kill and stone the Lord Jesus Christ? If he were merely a man, these Gnostics didn't believe he could do it because they did not believe in omnipotence, his all-powerfulness. Therefore, they ejected these words from John 8, 59. Then his omnipresence, John 7, 13. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Origen and all these other texts and versions omit these words, which is in heaven. They did not believe in the omnipresence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now true, the Lord Jesus was here on earth, but as to his deity, he's in heaven as well as on earth, all over the world. He still has omnipresence. Yes, he's seated to the Father's right hand, but he's also with us tonight. Two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst of you. Omnipresence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gnostics, no. They couldn't stand it, so every time they had a chance, they altered the Greek text, and these modern versions have followed Gnostic, Satanic heresy. The Gnostics denied number five out of 15, that the Son of God was not Jesus, the Son of God, but the Son of Joseph. In Mark 1 and verse 1, for example, uh, the King James Bible accurately says, and even the ESV, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But Origen and Westcott and Horto met the Son of God because the Gnostics didn't believe that he was the Son of God, and therefore they omitted that phrase. In Luke 2.33, uh, not Joseph and his mother, which is what our text receptor says, the King James Bible, but they say his father and mother. They did not believe that it was just Joseph, but that he was his father, his physical father. By the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God was his father, the Holy Spirit of God. And it was a virgin birth, giving him his perfect deity and perfect humanity in one united person, the Theanthropos, the God-man. They didn't believe it, so they said, his father. And then, uh, uh, say, uh, not the Son of God, again, again in Acts 8.37, we my brother mentioned that earlier today. Uh, they remove, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, just taken right out, because they deny that he's deity. They deny he's the Son of God, just the Son of Joseph. Then Ephesians 3.14, uh, Paul says, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the critical text and all these new versions omit our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ unites the Father with the Son, gives Him the deity, gives Him the Son of God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They take away. Uh, number six out of 15, Gnostics teach that Jesus is not the Lord, not deity. In 1 Corinthians 15, 47, I believe uh, Brother flew to that also today. Uh, the second man, the first man was Adam, the second man is the Lord from heaven. They just omit the word Lord, and some of these translations simply say the man from heaven. He's just a man, not the Lord from heaven. But they didn't believe the Lord came down from heaven. They believe he was born in this earth, that Joseph was his father, and he was never even in heaven. So they couldn't possibly have the word Lord in there. Knock it out. Gnostic heresy. In Matthew 13, 51. Uh, Yea, Lord, is what was said here, and the critical text, the Gnostic text, Omits, Lord, simply, yea, yes, but now, Lord, every chance they could get. Now, it's true that in Alexandria, Egypt, they did not have all the manuscripts of the New Testament. Praise God for that. There were many that got out from underneath them, and therefore we have some good ones that have the solid thing, but every one that they had, believe me, they altered. Every chance where it violated their theology, violated what they believed, they altered the words of Scripture omitting Lord. And here's Matthew 28, 6. 
uh, the place where the Lord lay. This was his bodily resurrection. The place where the Lord lay. Notice the place where he was lying. Not the Lord. You say, well, isn't that just accidental? No, it's not accidental. This purposeful use of Gnostic heresies that influence these manuscripts, changing just a word, Lord to he. Mark 9, 24. Uh, King James Bible, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. No, they don't met the Lord. Just I believe. Uh, any chance they could get to take away the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ was deity, master, Lord, they removed. And then uh, in Luke 9.57, again, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. They acknowledged him. These disciples acknowledged him that he was the Lord, Master, Kurios. And uh, they omit the word Lord. It's just, I will follow you. you. say, well, is that just accidental? You see, these people that are Gnostics and these people that promote Gnostic doctrines don't care how many manuscripts agree with them. Many times it's just only two, Vatican and Sinai, maybe a few others. They don't care. We have approximately 90% or more that are Texas Receptus manuscripts that are in existence, that are preserved, and less than 10%, really less than 1% or 2% that are Westcott and Hort type of critical Gnostic texts. They don't care how many manuscripts say it. They don't care whether 95 or 99 percent say another thing. They just want these two, Vatican and Sinai, these Gnostic manuscripts, and that's what they're using in these new versions and perversions. Uh, at Luke 9:59, uh, Lord suffer me, and so on. No, I don't even follow with you, but just take the Lord just for a minute. Just I suffer me to to do something else. Number seven, the Gnostics said that the Lord Jesus had a sin nature, was not perfect. Uh, these are pages 1771 from the Gnostic book. If you can see it, look it up yourself. Matthew 19, 16. He was addressed, good master, agathos, good. is not a sin nature, but perfection. They take it away. He's just master. Not good. His, his imp impeccability was, was taken away in Matthew 19, 17. Why callest thou me good? Here again, good, agathos. Excellent. Not just a normal human being, but good. They change it. Origin of these others. Why callest thou me the good? Just the good. Somebody not giving a deity or the fact that he's good and without a sin nature, but just simply the good. And then uh, in the eighth thing, Gnostics, the resurrection of Christ was spiritual and figurative, not bodily. Pages 81 and 82. And Luke 24, 51. Uh, after the other things are said about in that verse, the King James Bible clearly says, and carried up, the Lord Jesus was carried up into heaven. Just as clear as a bell. Literal heaven, the Lord Jesus carried up. They omit those words. You say, you see, isn't that accidental? Is it because they don't have manuscript evidence? It's omitted because the Gnostics don't believe it. That's why they didn't put it in. They don't believe he was carried up in heaven. They don't believe that the bodily resurrection of our Savior. In John 16, 16, Lord Jesus told his disciples, because I go to the Father. I go to the Father. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe he was going to go into heaven and the uh, resurrection, that he really physically could go to the Father. So they omit that verse. And then the resurrection of Christ was spiritual figurative, not bodily. Acts 22, rather, in verse 30. Uh, it was read earlier today in Acts. Our brother read it, brother. Uh, and so, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ. That whole section of that verse, Acts 2.30, is omitted. Just accidental, just manuscript evidence. The Gnostics who denied that the resurrection of Christ was possible. How could a man rise from the dead? and bodily rise from that dead. They didn't believe it. He was just a man. That's the theology. So they have to alter their Greek text to go along with the theology. Uh, we've heard a lot about the Princeton man and uh, what's his name? Metzger. Metzger, Bruce Metzger. You know, I read an article from him and he gave about 10 or 11 different heretics that resided in Alexandria, Egypt. He listed them in his book. I quoted it many times in other areas. And then he said this, 
Bruce Metzger, that apostate, that fellow that's the man that pushes the critical Gnostic Greek text. He says, after listing 10 or 11 heretical doctrines in all over Alexander Egypt, he said, what percentage, if any, who are conservatives in Alexander Egypt, I don't know. He couldn't find any, for sure, Bible-believing, conservative, fundamental teachers and doctrines in Alexandria and Egypt. That's, that's, that's uh, Bruce Metzger. Uh, they deny the bodily resurrection. These are doctrines of devils, really. Number nine out of 15. They, the second coming of Christ is not literal. They did not believe it was literal. They didn't even believe it was... How could uh, a man come back? That's all they believed was a human being. Uh, uh, wicked, sinful human being that needed to be saved. That's our Savior. That's our view of the Savior. In Matthew 25, 13, it talks about when the Son of Man, which is Himself, talking about Himself, when the Son of Man cometh, the second coming of Christ, they omit all these texts, the new versions, take it out, and they didn't take it out accidentally, I repeat. It's because Gnostic doctrine infiltrated Vatican and Sinai Greek manuscripts in Alexandria, Egypt, and the people, even fundamentalists today, not simply modernist apostates, not simply Roman Catholics, but Bible-believing fundamentalist Christians that we love in the Lord, they're saved. We don't agree with them on the text. But uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. They have love one for another. We love them. Wish we, we, I've said many times, I wish they'd love us back. But, but uh, we don't agree with them on what they teach about these things. The Son of Man cometh. And uh, they're, they're filling their churches and their pulpits, starting, as Pastor said, uh, it's the professors that are in charge. It's the professors, the teachers that are in charge, the pastors in charge, leading their people astray. And the professors that teach the, the, the preachers, and the professors that taught those, leading them astray. And so, hey, when the Son of Man is just a man, hey, he can't come back. Gnosticism infiltrated these manuscripts. Uh, Revelation 11, verse 17. And art to come, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, past, present, and future, are to come. He's not coming. He's just a man. How can a man come back? Gnosticism. Heresy. Did I miss one? Let me see. Eight. And that's nine. Okay, we're all right. The tenth one out of fifteen. Gnostics. Man is bisexual. Uh, man and woman. He's all combined. So sodomy is all right. If half of them is a man, half of them is a woman. And as mentioned, uh, Brother Mentioned earlier today in Deuteronomy, all these different verses, 20, I guess it was Dr. Yoon and others, 23.17, there should be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor sodomite, uh, just a shrine prostitute, NIV, or a cult prostitute. See, sodomy, uh, we don't want to call sodomy sodomy because uh, this is fine, this is all right, there's just bisexuality. The Gnostics were perfectly uh, happy with President Obama's stance on gay marriage. Perfectly happy. They're perfectly happy with all the laws of our country being changed to say marriage is a one person and another person. He was perfectly happy when, when the states, with states' rights, 90% in one state said no men and men, women and women marriages. The court threw that whole state thing out. Terrible. But that's what these Gnostics believe. Sodomy is all right. Uh, 1 Kings 14, 24, the same thing. Sodomites in the land. No, just male shrine prostitutes, male cult prostitutes, but not sodomites. In 1 Kings 15, 12, uh, sodomites again. Uh, just shrine prostitutes or male cult prostitutes. Uh, this is all right to them. Again, man, bisexual, sodomy is all right. In 1 Kings 22, 46, sodomites, shrine prostitutes, male cult prostitutes. Uh, 2 Kings 23, 5, sodomites, sodomites, prime prostitutes. Uh, called, the same thing. It's all right. No problem. Those people that use those versions say it's all right. Now, Gnostics also teach, now, this is a strange teaching. It's found on page 101 in that document, if you have it. Uh, the Mark 10, 7 says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Now, the Gnostics don't like marriage. They don't like sexual propagation. They think it's evil. It's hard to believe. They say it's evil. And so the text, the Gnostic and critical text and some of these versions omit and cleave to his wife. Just leave your father and mother. Don't, don't marry. Don't get away. Marriage 
and sexual propagation. Number 12, Gnostics, Lucifer is the Savior. One of our other brethren mentioned that yesterday or today. In Isaiah 14, 12, I believe Brother Yoon mentioned it right this morning, this afternoon, whatever it was. Uh, we have in 1412, our King James Bible, Jesus is the morning star, according to Revelation 22, 16, but uh, it's confused with Lucifer. How art thou fallen from him? O Lucifer, King James Bible, in the Masoretic Hebrew text. But the NASV, uh, O star of the morning. Well, in Revelation 22, 16, star of the morning, morning star is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, He's the same as Christ. Lucifer is the morning star, which is the Savior. Lucifer is the Savior. And then in NASV, O star of the morning, morning star. Uh, and NIV, morning star. Uh, ASV, day star. And as Brother Yoon mentioned, the word star is not in the verse. Use morning is not in the verse. Right. Ocare and all these other words. The Hebrew is not there. Uh, and Helel means shining one, as he mentioned. Shining one, bright one. And that's good Latin, lux ferus. Lux is light, ferus is to bear, to care, to bear light. Light bearer. Lucifer, it's a, it's a Latin word, but it's a good word. It's Hebrew, exact translation. But since the Gnostics believe that Lucifer is the Savior, they're comfortable teaching it as, oh, morning star, he's the Savior. Lucifer, the Savior. Now, number 11. But how do we go backwards? I don't know why I'm going backwards here. Uh, pardon me. Uh, number 13. They favor idolatry, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, and Nothing's wrong in the doctrines of the Gnostics. In Revelation 2, verse 15, it talks about Nicolaitans who are idolaters, and the Lord said, which thing I hate. They were idolaters, and idolatry was hated, but which thing I hate is, is left out of these manuscripts, these Gnostic critical retexts in the new versions, uh, because to them there's no sin in idolatry. Uh, then also, Gnostics think that fornication is all right. Pages 109, 110. And Romans 129, uh, fornication is in our King James Bible. It's omitted from the manuscript, the Gnostic critical text, and these new versions. Uh, they may have it some other places because the Gnostics, remember, in Alexandria, Egypt, didn't have all the Greek manuscripts. They had some. They polluted what they had. But they're all right. And then... Uh, the Gnostics favor also adultery. It's all right. Pages 109 and 110. There's no morality with the Gnostics. There's no morality anymore, I'm sad to say, in the United States of America as far as our government is concerned. There's no morality as far as our government is concerned in the military. I was a military Navy chaplain five years in active duty. We had the Universal Court of Military Justice, and it's specified no homosexuality. No adultery, no fornication, no bestiality. Now they're either have changed already or going to change the UCMJ. So fornication is fine. Sodomy is all right. Even bestiality, they're going to put right in the universal code. Military. We are living in a day, a Gnostic day, where all these things, no morality. And pretty soon, they may be coming knocking at some of our doors. Brother the boys mentioned that himself. And because we think these are sins, because we as preachers preach against these sins, and since the government thinks they're not sins, we may, we may pay me fined or into prison, uh, especially with the NDAA, which is, says that not only can they take you into prison if they want to, uh, without a judge, without a jury, without a trial, not only can they take you and put you in prison, not just any particular prison, but any prison in the world, whether in this country, another country, not only that, but forever. No ending. I tell you, we've got immorality here. I shouldn't get off on that, but adultery is one of these things that's changed in our country. We're a different civilization than when I grew up. Yeah. Uh, different civilization. Then in, uh, homosexuality is all right with the Gnostics. In Romans one twenty nine. the context is being the sins of homosexuals. And uh, they just... Uh, they use it, not the sins of Holy Spirit, but they call it fornication. Sodomy is what was there in that context, and they drop it out. Men working with men, that which is unseemly, and receiving the reward. And what is that reward? The homosexuals, the male homosexuals, 
with HIV, with early death. The statistics are there, as clear as, as could be. Homosexual males die young. Every one, statistically. There may be some exceptions, but the statistics are clear. But homosexuality with, with these Gnostics is all right. And number 14 out of 15, Gnostics believe that redemption includes the whole world, universal salvation. John 6, 47 is a wonderful gospel verse. King James Bible, text receptus. Lord Jesus, he that, let's say it together. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. To take out those words on me. Let's say John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only by him. And yet this Gnostic, terrible, critical Greek text, these other verses in the follow suit, eliminate on me. The Lord Jesus was speaking to his disciples and to others that were listening. And to say that just he who believes, it does not have any con uh, uh, object of the belief. That prepositional phrase, on me, is the object of that belief. If you take off the object, what do you have? Just he that believeth. What are you going to believe? Atheism is a belief, is it not? Mormonism? Uh, evolution? Uh, the love, the, the, I've often said the red nose. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Some would believe in that. See, if you'll believe that, you're all right. He that believeth, whether the Jewish believe, what it is, hath everlasting, or the tooth fairy. But he that believeth, this is because they believe in universal redemption and not simply those that are genuinely, personally saved in Christ. And finally, number 15 out of 15. Gnostics believe that heaven is not a literal place, but is figurative, just figurative. We mentioned earlier, I think, one of the brethren Talked about some of these things, but Matthew 5, 48. <clears throat> Even as your Father, which is in heaven. Now, you wonder, now, wait a minute, why do they, it may be just a textual variant. It's not simply a textual variant, it's Gnostic theology that got into those texts of Vatican Sinai and blotted it out because they didn't believe in a heaven. There's no heaven. It's not real. And so wipe it out. So they say your heavenly father. Not that there's a heaven, it's just a heavenly father. In Matthew 23, 9, one is your father who is in heaven, a heaven, a place. They just change it to heavenly father. And then in Mark eleven twenty six, 26, <clears throat> but if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive or trust me. You say, is that accidental? Why do they limit which is in heaven? I mean, these are not accidental. These are because of the Gnostics' denial of a physical heaven. And all these manuscripts and the versions, they omit which is in heaven. Luke 11, 2. Uh, again, our Father, which art in heaven? Heaven is a place. We believe it. I've gone to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. The Lord Jesus said that of his saved, born-again, genuine Christians. But they say no. They omit it. There's no heaven. What's art in heaven? And then uh, Luke 11, verse 2. Did I go into that already? I don't think. I, I've got to, sometimes it backs up. No, thy will be done as in heaven. Now, so on earth, just take it away. Wipe out heaven because the Gnostics deny heaven is a place. Luke 22, 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven. They just have an angel. This angel, the strength of the Lord Jesus, as he was in that garden, sweating, as it were, great drops of blood, before Calvary, it was an angel from heaven that God sent. Before the trial, and during the trial, and before that, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, you remember, Peter cut off Malchus' ear, a servant of the high priest. Whew. Put thy sword in thy sheath. The cup which my father gave me, shall I not drink it? Could I not pray the father? He gave me 10, 12 legions of angels. The Gnostics don't believe in angels. This was an angel who came from heaven. The Lord Jesus could have summoned the angels, but didn't because he knew the father's will. He came to seek and to save that which was lost based on his death at the cross of Calvary. But the angel from heaven strengthened him. 
They didn't believe in that. Then, down a literal place of these Gnostics in Luke 24, 51. Carried up into heaven. Very clear. The Lord Jesus, after his bodily resurrection, was carried up. They just said carried up. They don't believe in heaven. In John 3, 13, we've said this before earlier, the denial of the omnipresence of the Lord Jesus, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. They wiped it out, not only because they didn't believe he could be in heaven and the earth at the same time, which he could as deity, but they didn't believe in heaven. So they got to heaven, completely take it out. Uh, in Luke 24, 51, <clears throat> knowing in yourselves you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. I praise God, those of us who are genuinely saved have in heaven an enduring substance. And they were met in heaven because the Gnostics don't believe in heaven. Strike it out. And then John 5, 7, and 8. Uh, Dr. Favitra and others have mentioned this on the Trinity. I never really thought about much. I, I believe it's wrong to take out the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. It's wrong and it should be in there, all the doctrines. But I never until studying this subject noticed the word heaven, how the Gnostics hate it. That's one of the reasons why they couldn't put it in there. They took it right out in heaven. They don't want that. It's omitted. No heaven. And then it's not a literal place figured. Revelation 16, verse 17. The temple of heaven. No, oh, just a temple. No heaven. We have a temple in heaven. The Lord Jesus is the high priest, our great high priest in heaven. So the 15 Gnostic doctrines that we looked at just briefly, it's been very brief. There are many others I could point out. They deny that the universal, they believe in the universal fatherhood of all mankind, everybody saved. Jesus wasn't God incarnate. They deny his incarnation, the Lord Jesus, perfect God, perfect man. They deny some of his attributes, like omnipotence, his all powerfulness, walking through the people that are ready to kill him, or omniscience, as everywhere presence. Speaking about omnipotence, walking through this crowd, there was a crowd of Pharisees and Sadducees and others who wanted to stone him to death. I've been a, I was a football player in high school. I was a tackle. I was on the line. And when I was in the ninth grade, the boss, the head man, said, wait, I'd like you to see, try you out as a quarterback. I said, all right, sir. So, <laughs> and then get in that quarterback spot, and I want you to run us a couple of plays. And he wanted to be a, maybe a fullback, see, at that time. Not a quarterback, but a fullback. And I uh, said, so what play do you want me to run uh, uh, you know, the, for the man? I want you to run this play. Fullback, straight through. Well, I tried it. Whew. The line was there. They tackled me. I, one of the times I tried it, I think I stripped on my, my own heels and shoes. It fell over, but I couldn't do it. If I couldn't do it, I'm a human being. You're a human being, all of us. I, by the way, I never stayed at, at fullbackers. I was on the line. That was the end of that. It didn't, it didn't go very far. But if I could go through three or four or five linebackers and other people, could, how could the Lord Jesus Christ go through a multitude ready to kill him? Well, they, wouldn't, they would just pounce on him. But the omnipotence, all powerfulness went right straight through. I shouldn't continue, but... <laughs> On the presence, they deny the Gnostics, Jesus, the son of Joseph, not the son of God. Joseph was his father, named Joseph, but they said his father and mother. Gnostics believe the Lord Jesus is not Lord. They don't want it to take away his deity. They said he had a sin nature, he wasn't perfect. They deny the resurrection, bodily resurrection, and the spiritual, uh, figurative, not bodily. And then the second coming of Christ is simply not literal, just a Figure speech, wipe out everything. Man is bisexual. Sodomy is all right. Uh, marriage and sexual propagation is evil. Uh, Lucifer is the savior. And he's going to be saved because one of the, all the people in the world are going to be saved, including Satan, according to the Gnostics. They favor idolatry, fornication, adultery, homosexuality. Uh, redemption includes the whole world, universal salvation, including the devil. And heaven is not a literal place, but figurative. Well, in summary... It's the thing I started out with. The modern Bible versions have not changed many of their words by accident. And here's why again. The Gnostic manuscripts, Vatican Sinai, have changed many of the traditional received Greek words. In fact, 356 of them are doctrinal in nature. Dr. Jack Marmon's book out there, 
uh, that blue book that we held up, ancient manuscripts and Earth Church Fathers give you in 200 pages all 356 doctrines that are changed. Gnostic manuscripts, Vatican Sinai, have changed many of the traditional received Greek words. Why? In order to conform to the Gnostic doctrines of Alexander Egypt. And since the modern versions are founded on Gnostic manuscripts, Vatican Sinai, they also contain many of these Gnostic doctrines. That's, it's not accidental, it's purposeful. Be sure to order the Gnostic book, we have it at the back book table. Gnosticism, the doctrinal foundation of the New Bible Version. Now, not, many people don't believe that. Maybe you don't believe it either. You don't have to believe it. But I have come to that conviction. Reading that book, fat, fat book, 212 large pages, the quotation after quotation after quotation from Gnostics, pure Gnostics, whatever their name, whether it's Origen or any of these others, or Clement of Alexandria, I am personally convinced that Gnosticism is the very foundation of our modern Bible versions. And it's horrible to see our fundamentalist brethren push that stuff and to have them lie and say there's no doctrine differences. Everything's fine. Uh, I remember the man who's in charge of the, the whole Hebrew and Old Testament text over there in Bob Jones University. Uh, what's his name, Dan? Yeah, yeah. First name is... Samuel, Samuel Schneider. Samuel Schneider, I was there in Greenville one time and we had some meetings and talked about things and uh, Dr. Schneider was in the room and he was at the meeting. He came up afterwards and he got one of my books, Defending the King James Bible, and uh, said, would you sign it? I said, well, I don't know you sign it. If people ask me to sign it, sign it. So I signed the book to Dr. Schneider. In that book, chapter five, I list 158 of the 356 doctrinal perversions in the new version. I know he took, he got, I mean, maybe he didn't read it, I guess he didn't. Yeah. But if he had read it, and yet he's over and over and over and over again in his books that I've quoted many times, no doctrine's been changed, nothing. As I said before, our Gnostic critical Greek text brethren are either not knowing the facts or knowing the facts lie about them. I don't know which it is in the case of Brother Snyder, but I'm convinced. <coughs> Further information, there it is. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. Our Father, we do thank Thee for Thy grace. We thank Thee for the truth of the Scriptures. We thank Thee for the preserved Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek words that underlie our King James Bible. We thank Thee for the faithfulness for King James translators that gave it to us so that we could understand. We thank thee, Lord, for the, this book on Gnosticism, the foundation of the modern versions. I never would have understood, never would have even looked up the quotation after quotation after quotation of Gnosticism. But this lady did. She brought it to me one day many years ago. And I'm glad that I was able to look at it and to read it and understand it. Guide us, Lord. As we leave, we thank Thee for this 36th annual Dean Burgon Society Conference. Thank Thee for Brother Cooper and all of his people, the pianist and all the people that have made this conference, for all those that have come, some from short distances, some from large distances. We thank Thee that they are here. We pray that they may pray for our Dean Burgon Society. Uh, we're a small group. We're not huge. We're not uh, well-to-do. But Lord, we feel that we have the truth that is lacking today in many of our pulpits, many of our schools and seminaries and colleges, and we feel burdened to tell the truth and push it out so that others may believe it and receive it. Go with us and bless us and use us. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing. Uh